Hello, and welcome to the League of Extraordinary Atheists for Humanism, and where we attempt to, uh, to apply logic and reason to religion and politics, whenever I remember that part of the tagline. Uh, we're here tonight in our pajamas uh, to have some comfy combos with Mac and Christy. Yeah. So, hi, Christy. Hi, Mac. Hi. From my, from my jammies. Yes. Can you show everyone your awesome jammies? Jammies. And, Jam and leggings, of course. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and just like. Uh, yes. You look so snuggly with your hands. NASA pants. I love it. I just them. had like my Batman shirt on, but like I got cold. Yes. It does happen. Sweater. And In my, your <laughs> my real fast socks. I love it. Ah. Oh, get comfy in my chair here. The best combos happen when you're comfy. That's right. That's right. Um, I'm uh, um, oh, they didn't yeah. see the problem. I'm sorry. Not just said that you guys might not see my nasty pants, but that's okay. You guys got to see me talk about my nasty pants. Anyways, um, we are not live tonight, which is a little bit different. Um, but difference okay, right? We like different sometimes. Um, yeah. Our schedules didn't quite line up tonight uh, for a live show. So we're recording this last night which is now for us, you know, it's a wibbly wobbly timey wimey kind of dealio. <laughs> so, anyways, uh, we have a, just a couple topics to quickly cover um, from the news this week. And then we're just going to kind of talk about ideology a little bit and kind of compare where Christine and I are on different issues together because we haven't done that in a while. And I think it's always fun to, and I think it's always super duper important to, like state where our positions are and kind of uh, um, show people like where our biases lie. So you can kind of get to know us more and like understand where we're coming from. Cause uh, I think that's a, uh, I think that's a good thing. Yeah. Very good. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> so Christy, do you want to go, go first? You had, you, you had a thing that you were telling me about that was already making me mad. So I'm going <laughs> to yeah. grab my, my lightning bolt glass and, Yes, you, you have some sips. Um, shame on you is the title of North Carolina GOP vote to override veto while Democrats were absent. So when you think of democracy, you think of the more, the better everybody putting in their vote to have a democratic outcome. What you don't think of or what I don't think of is a healthy democracy where you tell half of the country to go ahead and go do your thing, go do you boo, and then secretly hold a vote. That wouldn't be democracy, right? So North Carolina House Democrats are calling foul on their Republican colleagues for voting to override the governor's budget veto on Wednesday while most Democrats were not present. The uproar began after GOP uh, Rep. Jason Sane made a motion early Wednesday morning to reconsider the budget that was vetoed by Democratic Governor Roy Cooper earlier, th earlier this year. Democrats, ex um, well, first of all, let's just tell you this happened on 9-11. On yeah, I was saying the, the whole Congress was told to go ahead and go enjoy your 9-11 um, memorials. They were going to be everywhere. And as a congressperson, that is something that I'm sure is on your, you know, your schedule for the week, for the month. And it's important. These are days where, you know, the country suffered together. No Democrats, no Republicans. It was just Americans that were hurt. So it's important. And a lot of them did. They left to go enjoy their or pay homage to and respect to these um, memorials that they went to. But while they were gone, the Republicans called a quick hurry up and get your asses back here because we're going to vote without them type of vote. Um, Democrats went crazy on social media. I don't know if anybody was paying attention to that. 
a few who were present in the House at the time that the vote, they were they were protesting like, I mean, just exactly, I'm so proud of them, exactly how they should have been. They were furious. They were screaming. You can hear um, my favorite who was screaming, how dare you do this, Mr. Speaker, said Democratic Republican, I mean, a representative, Deb Butler, Deb Butler, who was surrounded by fellow Democrats on the House floor as she shouted in protest at the, at the decision. According to a video posted online, which I will be posting underneath and in chat while we're live tomorrow, <laughs> will be posted online um, by me and she also says, quote, if this is the way you think democracy works, shame on you. This is not appropriate. And you know it. The people of North Carolina will you will have to answer to the people of North Carolina. And she over and over the same words in different order. And she was loud. I mean, she was so loud. And at one point when they were getting louder, she reached over and grabbed the microphone and put that by her mouth and still kept going. Yeah, yeah she's, she's screaming. I, yeah, she was. She was I mean, I was. No, no, there's not an excuse for it. There, no, no. And every single person that was a part of it should be in trouble, not just oh, yeah. in trouble. You know, I, I, yeah. So this is happening while all these other things, you know, look over here and look over here. We have entire parties taking over um, congressional houses and doing these type of shenanigans it's not even shenanigans to me that's an illegal vote so yeah what kind of laws do we have in place to to keep that from happening or like what what kind of punishment do we have for those kind of votes? good to look you, into I, w I would love to know um you know i i would love to know i if we can't trust each other one says this place will fall apart. And I agree with that. I don't know what laws there are. I think that maybe, unfortunately, it might just be a trust thing. It might just be, you know, the good old handshake. We have a vote on the state. And yeah. we don't have a vote on the state. So when Congress hears we don't have a vote on the state because we, you're free, free to do whatever, that should be a, we don't have a vote on that day. It shouldn't be anything can you imagine how the conservatives would act if this was flipped the other way around <gasps> oh poorly <laughs> oh gosh it would just be it would be insanity the world would be falling apart there would be calls for people to be arrested right um a aoc and tulsi gabbard have talked a lot about how it is in Congress, where you you don't vote on your opponent's bills, right? Because you don't want the other party to look good. Right. So the uh, the Republican Party has really taken this to a whole new level. They're not only um, not voting on Democratic bills. Um, they are, well, Mitch McConnell, as we know, you know, the Grim Reaper. <laughs> Reapers, Reaperage. Mm, I can come up with a good one. I'll come, <laughs> I'll come back to it later. So, <laughs> next time. <laughs> All week, I will be moderately okay. Um, but, the Grim Reaper? Uh, anyway. Um, <laughs> He just he just blocks bills, right? So yeah. they don't have to worry about being on on the uh, record voting against bills, even if they know like they're not going to pass. They don't have to be on the record voting against bills. So they're so they're not only um, voting against Democratic bills; they're just completely blocking them. And in this case, to make sure their bills pass, to make themselves look good, they're waiting until the Democrats aren't there to pass their own bills because I mean, it looks good on the record if you know, they, they pass bills, right? So they, they are just 300% cheating. Like yeah. in every way that they could be on all levels of, of Congress. <laughs> it's, yeah. it's really, really disgusting. Um, yeah. And it's, and, you it's know, fun. something should be said. If, if you know your bill cannot pass, if there is a healthy democracy where everyone participates, 
I, I, that's the end of that sentence. If you know that, then come up with a different bill. <laughs> but that's not there. They think, well, there's no way that it will. So let's cheat. Yeah. And yeah. they did yeah. it on a day. I mean, on a day when the whole country is united, you know, and standing together, doesn't matter, Democrat, Republican, it doesn't matter. There were, People were were together to have a day of remembering, a day of, you know, of, of looking back and, and on a day when it wasn't about anything like that, not about partisan decisions. It just they pulled their most deceptive stunt yet in that Congress. That was just. And it's not, it was an assault on democracy. Yeah, it really was. And like, what they did the same thing in Alabama trying to pass the abortion laws, didn't they? Yes, they did. Except like they didn't wait till 9-11. They just, they just right. found a day where I don't even think it was a day. I think it was just at the end of the day or something yep. like that uh, when most people had left. They're like, oh, hey, uh, you want to pass this bill? Yep, sure. Okay, everyone in paper. Yeah. Oh, whoa, 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 whoa. <laughs> it was just they tried yep. to do so fucking sly. And it's. It's just, it's not an accident. It's definitely cheating. Yeah. And they just think they can get away with it. And it's the, it's, it's the precedent that the president has set, right? Yep. Um, and I mean, it's not just him, right? Because there's a series of events that leads to him. There, He has a backing. So. Yeah, it's just, not a bug. It's, a, it's the feature. This is how... Yeah. These are politics of the 21st century, unfortunately, unless yeah. we, the people, decide to put our foot down and stop it. If we're just going to watch it go by and nah, 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 condemn it, but don't put our foot down and say, no, this is unacceptable, then it's just going to happen. If it is a government that is of, by, and for the people, like we tell the whole world, then it needs to start being that way. It, it really, that also means that we, the people, the regular people, the moms, the dads, the dentists, the teachers, the, the grocery bagger have to get involved. Yeah, we do. Um, so I guess my question here um, is what can we do to stop? I'm sorry. I have the squeakiest chair right now. I don't think it's ever been the squeaky. I hope you guys can't. It's like a it. haunted house in a chair. I like it. <laughs> it's just my ass. Um, <laughs> so, anyways, what can we do to keep mm-hmm. this from happening again? Um, you know, let's say Mac and, and Christy are in charge here to come Ooh, up with the funny. Like, what do we do? Because my first thought is um, because I don't think punishment's really going to do it because it's hard to enforce punishment half the time and then the, the uh, other half of the time it's hard to find a good punishment so my my good two cents I think is um, make, le- make le- legislation that allows um, votes to happen over like a number of like two or three days so if the Democrats are out or the Republic or the Republicans are out and well, Hey, we need to get this vote vote through whether you actually need to, or you just want to, yep. well, when it's done, everyone has to be notified. Yep. And mandatory participation, bitch. That is your job. You are yeah. elected it to be there. Job. You have yeah. to vote. Your non vote tells your people back home that you represent that you're not participating. And I do have a punishment. I have an oh, app punishment. Yes. I think okay. that it would be appropriate to have all of the people who were a part of this deceptive illegal vote have to go to their constituents doors, pick 200 each knock on the door and say, hi, I'm sorry I cheated and explain (laughs) why you did it and that you won't do it again. And if you opt not to do that punishment, you will write, I will not cheat 200 times and mail those to your constituents. Either one is good for me. Right. (laughs) I think, I think just standing outside of Walmart with (laughs) one of those eyes, like, yeah. 
I'm, I'm a an elected cheater. I'm a shiesty I'm politician and I cheat and I'm sorry. <laughs> yeah. I cannot okay. win on my merits or my ideas, so I cheated and I'm sorry. I resign. Sorry. Sorry. Yeah. <laughs> sorry. All right. I'm um, totally kidding in case anybody's thinking that I'm this crazy dictator, although it would be really <laughs> fun to open my great. door and it'd be a, uh, I don't care, Democrat or Republican who cheated and did something inappropriate to knock on my door and explain to me why they did it and that they're sorry. I would like that. Because what your fuss would just be, this is why people don't like Florida. <laughs> you, you did this. Uh, although Rick Scott when he was the leader here, I've been told multiple times by different people that when he shakes someone's hand, he does the like, mm. like Mr. Burns from The Simpsons. Like, he looks like Mr. Burns too. So, yeah. He is. <laughs> yes. That's He's great. evil like Mr. Burns. That's <laughs> pretty great. <laughs> All right. Um, so. I just have two things that I briefly want to touch on. Okay. Um, one, and this I'm going to get into more later. Um, so the state of California uh, passed, not passed, they came to some sort of an arrangement with um, the Ford Mo- the, um Ford Motor Company, uh, Volkswagen of America, Honda, and BMW. They had reached an agreement. I'm reading from a source, um, source from Secular Talk. <laughs> but, uh, um, they announced that they had reached an agreement in principle with California on emission standards stricter than those being brought by the White House. Which hmm. I thought was interesting. The announcement came as an embarrassment for the Trump administration, um, which assailed the move as a PR stunt. So this, I about shit my pants when I heard it. <laughs> um, not just because of the part that I read you, but because um, Trump's trying to like, um, I, I, I forget the exact action. Do, do you remember? He's um, He's trying to like, lower the standards or like make sure they can't do this because they didn't do it through him. Like they're all they're doing is they're working with the state saying, yeah, we're going to lower our admissions to here. And they're like, whoa, 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 whoa. That makes me look bad. And he's like taking action Mm -hmm. to make it stop. Now I don't have all the details because I really haven't looked into it much. And, um, we, we didn't know what the topic was going to be this week. Um, so we're mostly just chatting. But <laughs> this is one that I'm going to bring to the table next week uh, with a lot more info. Because this is just, what the fuck yes. <laughs> is going on? There's a lot of what the fuckery. Yeah, There's I had to make a new playlist. And it was just called What the Actual Fuck. <laughs> <laughs> At YouTube. Um, so, that, so that was one thing. The other thing... Um, and I and I have a follow up for this. And again, I'm just quickly letting people know this. The RNC, the Republican National Committee, um, is canceling primaries in multiple states. Mm-hmm. Uh, some of these states include uh, North Carolina, Nevada, Arizona. Um, there's some others. I think there's like five or six now. They're canceling their primaries uh, to um, make sure they don't pull too much support from Donald Trump and also to save the state's money. Now, on the surface, to a skeptical person, this seems shady as fuck because they're just rigging the election to just make sure they they have their boy Trump. It's limiting democracy. it, It is, Absolutely. And I have multiple feelings on this because one, yes, they're absolutely doing this Two, I'm sure it saves the state's money. That's, that's a valid thing to say with it. (laughs) 
Um, is it a valid reason to do it? No, <laughs> but I'm sure it saves 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 them money. Um, Kyle Kalinsky made a really good point, saying they're not going to take enough attention from Trump right. uh, to like take a spot. That being said, it still isn't democracy. Like, if you don't like Trump and you're a Republican or conservative, you probably want someone else to vote for. But you don't get that. You don't get someone else on your ticket. You just don't now. And that's really a problem. And I, and um, now it's very far deep down. Um, it makes me a little bit happy because I'm just like, yeah, fucking do it. Because if we get more people to understand how broken our democracy is and what that means when our democracy is broken, we're going to get more people revolting against it because right now, even people in the, de in the democratic party, there's so many people who don't realize what happened last time. Oh, how yeah. literally just stole the election from, from Bernie. Um, and we're the democratic party. Yeah. Right? That's a huge problem. We need to realize that. The other side of that coin is I hear a lot of conservatives talk about how, oh, well, we're not a democracy. We're a republic. Okay. Well, we're a representative a democracy. democracy. We're a democratic republic. Yes. So, yes. yes, you're right. We're a republic, a democratic one. Democratic Republic, yes. So if we're not democratic... I just want to see shit out of I'm sorry. I'm okay. <laughs> okay. You're good. You're good. A, that's a sane response. So <laughs> the thing is, they don't quite... It's like they don't understand what democracy entails, right? And But at the same time, when October comes around next year, just as much as, as, the, as the Democrats... Except, no, more than the Democrats, they're going to be saying, go out and vote, go out and vote, go out and vote, exercise your, you know, your rights, your democracy. What if you don't have that? You need to fight for, for, for the democratic part of our nation or else you get screwed like this. Mm -hmm. and, uh, and a lot follows. A lot follows. You can just follow the rabbit hole any way you want to go. But, uh, yeah, so, like I said, there's there's a small part of me that's like, yeah, fuck them over. <laughs> fuck them over because you're shooting yourself in the foot just like the DNC did last time. Right. Like, fuck over your constituents uh, because more and more people are paying attention now than ever. So, and I honestly think that a lot of Trump voters um, – who don't like Trump anymore, they're going to become Bernie voters before Absolutely. they become uh, Biden well, there, voters. There right. are a huge, a massive chunk of voters who wanted to vote for Bernie and when he wasn't available anymore, voted for Trump. Yeah. So if we could have all of those back and... Um, Bernie is there is nobody like Bernie. Bernie's dad. Yeah, he's our Gramps, and I love him. And like he just, I just love how humble he is. I love that if you know, I I really don't like when people say, "Oh, he's a grumpy old man." Well, uh, me, there's us. a lot of things to be grumpy about right now. Shit's fucked up. And if he should always have a perma smile to make you feel better, that's fake. And that's why we're in the problem. We chose Obama because he was that. He was the, you could set him on a shelf. He was the definition of presidential. The definition. He could speak. He could, he, I liked him. I still like him. I still think he's a good guy, but he's also a war criminal, you know, and that's hard to, to marry in your mind. I don't think that Bernie would be that. No, I don't think so either. So uh, I said I had a follow up for this uh, yeah. because, and 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 I and I know a lot of people are going to disagree with me. And that's fine, um, but um, I think that we need to learn from this, and we can't just keep throwing milk toast.
candidates out. We can't keep throwing band-aids out, right? Because right. we're not getting a- anything done going between um, anything like Clinton-like and Trump-like. We need real change. We need real fixes. We need a uh, political revolution. That's not, you know, bloodshed. I don't advocate for that. Um, so I want to make the hashtag not just band-aids. Right. Um, and I want this to go through until uh, not just the primaries, but past the generals. Like I want to try to keep this hashtag going just throughout. If you agree with my stance that we can't just have a fucking Joe Biden. Mm-hmm. He's not going to cut it. I will not vote for Joe Biden. Um, mm-hmm. Even if there's Trump. Um, and again, you don't have to agree with me. You can disagree with me. Um, but that's my stance. Um, uh, <laughs> fuck band-aids. <laughs> that's what Christy typed to me. Hashtag fuck band-aids. Hashtag not just band-aids. <laughs> Sorry. I have a party about it tonight. <laughs> Something about band-aids uh, that we don't we don't just want band-aids. It'd be fucking band-aids. Oh, I show up in my jammies and my mouth is a toilet. <laughs> <laughs> Your keyboard's just typing atrocious things. But um, no, I think it's really important um, because hey, I know Trump is bad. Trump yeah. is bad, but if we get Joe Biden, we're gonna get Mike Pence right after him. And I and I don't want that. I don't want a band-aid. I want a real fix. I want a radical fix and nothing's going to fix it. Like I'm, I'm, I'm sick of back and forth. Um, I really want a Medicare for all system for yeah. me. I want it for my family. I want it for my friends. I want it for everyone that I know because everyone I know tends to freaking need it. And Joe Biden's not going to deliver that. And that's not the only thing I'm worried about, but I'm worried enough about, I'm worried about it enough to make that my single issue. And I don't need to. I have a hundred other justifications. No, it's not just so, you, Mac. Over five hundred. Fa- no, I'm sorry. Over five hundred million people in this country have to file bankruptcy. Five hundred million. Five hundred thousand. Sorry. Five hundred thousand. I was gonna say, wait. There's a three hundred twenty-six. Yeah. What time is it? Yeah. Over over five hundred thousand every Midnight. single year in this nation have to file bankruptcy for medical reasons. And even if it's, they say, well, it's not, it's not the only reason, but it is a reason oh, yeah. in their yeah. bankruptcy. You know, um, if, okay, so take the medical part out, they probably wouldn't have had to file bankruptcy, but because of the medical, they had to file bankruptcy. That is unacceptable. And uh, uh, unacceptable. There's not, for me, that's it. I don't need to argue it anymore. I don't need to debate it anymore. I've done all the research and the data is in. We know that Medicare for all would be so much more inexpensive for the nation. So much more inexpensive for the nation as a whole. And everyone would be covered. You know, a few months ago when your boys were sick, that was, it's stressful to think, Mm -hmm. well, Let's keep checking because if that fever gets too high, we have to take them to the emergency room because you have to. They're your babies. But then you also automatically have a few thousand, just a couple hours into it, a few thousand dollars in debt. It's just insanity. So you shouldn't have to think, should I or shouldn't I? If we all had coverage, adequate coverage, the minute your boy was sick at midnight, You'd be at the, you'd be on your way to the hospital just to make sure that he got the best care possible instead of trying to wait out the fucking night. That's an American reality. I know it. When my girls were little, I was fortunate that I was married and he had insurance. I know, I know I was fortunate, but with Jordan for the first six, seven months of her life, it wasn't like that. And I also have lived without it when they were teenagers. It, it, It's terrifying to just think, you know, maybe just maybe it'll break. Maybe the fever will break. Let's just wait a little bit longer because you don't want to have a bill and you're rationing your child's care or not care because you can't afford it. And that's, I don't know. You're not the only one. This is 
for, I would say, a majority of voters in 2020, this is, uh, if it's not on your ticket, you're not getting their vote. Right. No, yeah, it's not. Um, and and obviously, that's that's not the only thing, but um, it's a big enough issue. It's Yeah, it's top three. It can make the argument. <laughs> so, um, because just that security alone, and uh, doesn't matter. Um, just that alone um, can help lower the uh, the infant mortality rate, which for the U.S. of uh, 2017 was like uh, 5.8 deaths per 1,000. Yep. But in other countries, it's, going up. It, it's like a quarter of that. Yep. And in this country, it's um, in black communities, it's even higher. That's unacceptable. We're all in the same nation. It should be Americans and American health care. And a lot of the deaths, we still have 45,000 people every single year die because of yeah. lack of health care. And I don't think people understand what that is. That's your uncle going into the hospital because he collapsed at age 52. And them saying, I'm sorry, he has stage four and it's metastasized all through his body. Because he never had health care to go get his annual checkup. That's your, your aunt getting really sick and just taking over the counter medicine and then finally going to the hospital and them saying, I'm sorry, you have stage three breast cancer. Why didn't you have a mammogram? What? Because they're expensive and I don't have health care. That's what that is. It's unacceptable. You're mutey. Sorry. And then my mouse cursor went away. Um, <laughs> yeah. We need people. This is my point. Um, if, it's, if it sounded like a non sequitur, I apologize. My point is uh, we need people, like Christy said, to seek uh, preventative care. We need them to feel comfortable enough to seek preventative care because it causes less deaths when you catch things early, right? And if you are worried about taking yourself, your kids, your mom, your grandma, or your dad, you know, um, to the doctor because uh, it's, it's, it's kind of a high fever, but, you know, as long as it breaks, nothing else is wrong with them, right? We, we need to have that social safety net. We need to have that peace of mind that we can just go to the doctor and find out what the fuck's wrong <laughs> because that saves us so much money in the long run when it's cancer, when it's heart disease when it's something, something serious, right. right? When we catch it early, it's way easier, way cheaper to treat. And someone else might not make as much of a profit off of that, but we pay less, less nationally mm -hmm. when we get things earlier. Yep, I and, and many things can, we can know many, many times, you know, eight out of 10 times they say your annual doctor's appointment where you get your blood taken and you get urine analysis, just the basics that it nine out of 10 times. That's when we say something's abnormal come in for testing, but we would never know until that abnormal that could have been tested is way past where we can treat it. And um, I don't know. Do we care as, as an American, every American is somebody's family. And I just, Think of them as part of my family. I would want them to know. I would want their mom to be able to be there for the kids. I would want the kids to definitely outlive their parents. This is just something that we have to, as a people, say enough is enough. These are things that matter to us, and we're not going to accept a country without it. No. And uh, real quick. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> <laughs> you fucking knew. Um, I was going to say real quick because I, uh, I had read the, uh, the, the, uh, the uh, number uh, just for infant mortality rates, because, yeah. I, because I think that says something about it does. our health system. Yeah. Um, for, for, us, for a country who cares about babies so much. Yes. Cares yes. Pro-life, a pro-life nation, right? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I'm assuming so. Um, 
again, ours was 5.8 per thousand uh, deaths mm -hmm. uh, per live births, per 1,000 live births. Um, and uh, and uh, I lost in Norway, sorry. In Norway, it's one or 2.1. So 5.8 for us, 2.1 in Norway. In Japan, which has a lot of fucking people, <laughs> yeah. um, it's 1.9. Right. And that dropped since um, 1968 uh, from 15.1, which is a fucking lot, mm -hmm. um, down to that 1.9. That's, that's crazy. So I think, uh, one, we're doing something wrong. Two... I don't know if, if it motivates anyone competitive, Japan is doing better than us and something else. Right. So also like super smash brothers, you guys, you know, you guys got that. <laughs> anyways, anyways, that's my whole spiel there. Um, unless you have anything else to add to this, I'm, I'm down for ideology time. Yeah. yeah. Oh, just real quick. I want to talk to you. Um, Trump's administration and his dingling wife's idea about banning vape pens because banning things works so well. And I want to just caveat, Mr. Trump, if you want to ban these things because six people have died, assault rifles have killed thousands of people. And then also... Mr. Trump, if you want to ban these things because six people have died, I don't know. How about the people who created an opioid crisis who killed how many? Maybe ban them from the country or something. I don't. All of it sounds ludicrous, right, Mr. Trump? Because it is. Banning substances doesn't work. Get your shit together and move on to something that matters. And that's all I got to say about that. Look, let's just agree to disagree and agree that there are fine people on both sides. <laughs> you don't have any doubt. I don't have any doubt. And that's just how it is. Keep your oh, up. my gosh. I love when he says my wife, she has a son. <laughs> if you need to watch it, if you haven't seen it, it's so funny. Seen, you I've seen, seen it today? It's, oh, no, it's no, funny. No, I'm saying I haven't. My wife really cares about these e-cigarettes and you know she has a son and then you can see his face and he goes together like <laughs> <laughs> what <laughs> you and her have it gotcha or are you trying to tell the world something <laughs> he has he has so many gaffes uh, <laughs> all right I ideology okay. Ideology. Okay. So cool. Let's have some fun here, everybody. Um, every now and then I like to uh, compare um, where Christy and I are on different issues uh, because uh, mostly because Christy's way smarter than me. So this is a really good way for me to figure out um, when she knows something I don't know. I pretend. <laughs> <laughs> So, um, cool. Um, religion or politics, religion or politics, religion or politics. Uh, Which one are we starting at? Uh, politics. Okay. Politics. Cool. Um, I'll pick a topic and then you can pick a topic. Okay. Um, let's say foreign affairs. Ooh, okay. How do you think we should deal with other countries? Just overall, like what should be our foreign policy on diplomacy? And when should we um, uh, scrap diplomacy and go to war? Mm -hmm. No, like well, where's your lines? What's your general take on it? Just your general take on it. My, my general for the second part is for myself, and I think for the future of, of peace on the planet, 
the only acceptable time for war is defense. There's that's it. And I understand that maybe your allies are in trouble and you should show up to defend them. Not go over there to beat up their neighbors for them. So that's my foreign, um, as far as war goes. And di diplomacy should always come first. And I mean, I think the more that we weave it together, not just our government is diplomatic with their government, but we have lots of NGOs that really don't get involved. I, I, I'm tired of the fake NGOs talking about English teachers without borders getting involved in countries that we would otherwise have sanctions with. And then them, Iran, Iran, and then their teachers coming here to teach the language so that we could have future ambassadors to both who, you know, if you spend time in a country, you make friends there. And if you make friends there, it's harder for you to say, yeah, go ahead and bomb them if you're involved. And I think that realizing that we're all here together and we have so much to learn from each other, especially a nation like Iran. And I'm not saying they don't have problems. They have serious problems. Um, freedom of speech is not a, a thing there. And you know, there are tons of problems. I'm not talking about that. I'm talking about what we do have in common and what we can learn from them. They're an ancient civilization. And they could make a lot of money off of tourism from being a very ancient civilization. And so I think the goal would be to, you know, hey, let's let's exploit the things that we have in common. You, us, us, them, and for every country. I think diplomacy is the most important. And education, education, if a country like Saudi Arabia says they don't want to educate their girls, then we don't fucking sell them a anything, not a, not a piece of rice, you know, unless you say, these are the things that we care about, human rights, education, if, if you don't want these things in your country, well then, I'm sorry, we can't help you. Now, if you want to get there, and you're here, way down here, and it's going to take a lot for you to get there, we're willing to help, because your end goals are our end goals, but the minute that we see you only using for the, the money that's coming in, Israel doing stuff like this with their 11, you know, uh, 11 billion dollars a day of tax money goes, I just, they're bombing all kinds of countries. And so for me, that would be something, it would cease. You just bombed who? Guess what? Your check doesn't come. And International investigators are coming. They don't have to be our investigators. International investigators are coming. I think that there comes a time where we just have to say, what is the most important? Human rights are the most important. There will be no more wars that are offensive. I, I That would be my dream for foreign affairs. And I know that's probably la-la land because we have these multinational corporations who have so much money that you and I can't even fathom that. We don't even know what that would look like to have money that can buy people, that can buy people to do things for you and then disappear, like insane money. And when you have that type of money, it's not money that you're after, it's power. And um, that's scary. I think that for also foreign I think multinational corporations, they have to be, this is going to piss off a lot of capitalists, but they have to be broken up. They, they, you can't have that much power where you can go into native land in, in Central America and kick indigenous people off their lands and poison their lands because you have enough money to do so. That's unacceptable. And um, I don't I'll be on the indigenous people's side probably on everything. As far as right now, they make up less than, um, what was it, less than 4% of the world's population and over 85% of the world's um, uh, environmentalists. They're the ones on the front lines fighting for our planet. 
So, and that to me, the indigenous peoples are not just America's Native Americans. The indigenous people are the Aborigines in Australia. They're you know, there's so many cultures, so many languages, and I think that we also have a lot like to a learn from book. them. Hmm? It sounds like a storybook. Like that. Yeah. yeah like, like here comes Armageddon and the only ones who can save us. <laughs> Wouldn't that be something We're if the uh, ones we ignored? Right. Well, think about that. There were um, all of these farmers who couldn't, their land just kept deserting, just becoming a desert. There was nothing they could do. Desert land was happening. And indigenous people taught them that you can't just rape the land. You bring chickens out in the morning. And when the chickens stomp around the cow poop from the night before, you know, there's just there's just the circle of the cows and the chickens and you move along with it. And lo and behold, grass started growing again. You know, there's just it takes patience and time and not raping the land. And we've learned that from indigenous people. So as far as foreign goes, I think that indigenous peoples of the world have a lot and they should be at the table at United Nations <laughs> Without a doubt, they should be at the table every time there are votes going on that have to do with sovereign land and and, and uh, human rights. I think that they would have always something to add. So that would be my hippie, hippie love yeah. foreign, <laughs> foreign policy. So let me just. <laughs> ask a little more on that before you uh, we flip it and I compare uh -huh. um, so just so two things and then I think that's all, all, all I have for uh, foreign and I guess domestic policy too because we kind of covered that um, or like diplomatic sorry but uh, so what would you do um, in the case of I guess more or less like Pearl Harbor or September 11th, like what would be your, your response there? And then also um, how would you use sanctions if at all, or what would you use instead of like, would you just stop trade? Um, what would, do you think would be the most effective? What would you be happiest with there? And then well, for, for Pearl Harbor or, or nine 11, obviously not invade a country that has nothing to do with it. I would never do that. However, look, I think we need to invade. <laughs> right. I know. Um, I think that we should go to Peru and try to find some terrorists. <laughs> like, right. I would For all the Muslim people. Like that. I would treat it the way I would treat any crime. I think that that it is. It's a crime. It was a crime. Yeah. That means that there were proverbial bad guys, and the yeah. bad guys. Because in, in both of those um, perished in the in the activity, there are people that were above them. There has to be, unless they were the masterminds behind it. Which Pearl Harbor, there were masterminds that were still alive, and you go about it as investigating a crime to find out who you know who is behind it. And I think that we have a long way to go. To have an international court that's not bought off by us, you know, and uh, that's coming from someone who lives in the country who has bought the, <laughs> the court off. I, I don't agree with it. I right. even if it's on our side, I don't think it's it's right. But for 9-11, I would do it like um, any other crime. We need to investigate it. We need to peer review what we find. We need to make sure what we have in front of us can be verified. And we go from there. But we don't make a kill list that grows every single day. And we don't invade another country that had nothing to do with it because they have resources that we want. Right. Um, for so the, what do you do when you find out who it is? What would, what, what would your response be? I think that we use international law. Um, like I said, we have a long way to go to have an international law that's not bought off by us. No black sites, no torture, no waterboarding. We would do, in my you know, dream of foreign policy world, we would have extradition laws with other countries as they would with 
ours equally, but that would mean that the other country that we would have extradition laws would also hold human rights to the same way. I mean, they have to follow these, you know, these pillars, if you will, in order for us to do extradition laws with. And I don't see a problem with holding an international, you know, if they're from somewhere else, holding an international court. And then there has to be, if you did it, and these 3,000 people are, are murdered and we can prove without a shadow of a doubt you orchestrated this terrorist attack, then you have to go to prison. I mean, okay. how I don't, about a, torturing's not going to help. No. Invading the country he comes from, not going to help. And then would you use sanctions for anything or... <sighs> Yes. You know who needs fucking sanctions right now? Saudi Arabia. Israel? Israel. I would be okay if tomorrow when I woke up, all of a sudden we were, you know, there are beheadings and people are being crucified and people are being murdered for pro-democracy dissent in Saudi Arabia. So we are going to apply sanctions on the oligarchs there. However, that's kind of being hyperbolic because I feel like sanctions, I don't feel like, I know. I know sanctions are a form of warfare. And because we have these things called data and polling and information that can be run through a computer so we have numbers, we know without a shadow of a doubt that sanctions hurt the the most vulnerable among any country. They hurt the people who are making barely anything who are living paycheck to paycheck that's who they hurt so even though i'm being hyperbolic and saying that saudi arabia should have sanctions i don't feel like in the 21st century doing the type of warfare that is essentially i mean sanctions are essentially surrounding a castle and starving them out things that we used to do in medieval times it's yeah. just a um, more advanced way of doing it. And so I'm a humanist without anything else above that to me. That is wrong. It hurts the humans that are in that country. I think yeah. that if we cannot come up with a better way that to use the word sanction and it actually go in and hurt just the people on the top, then sanctions should be off the table altogether. Yeah. And embargoes. I think surrounding a country so that they can't get food in and out because you don't agree with their politics is fucking barbaric. Yeah. So. No, I agree. Go Cuba. Uh, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> um, okay. So I'm going to try to answer my own question if I remember how I asked okay. it. And then uh, you should pick a political topic to okay. ask me about next. Um. So I think that, and I think I'll answer it in the same um, order, more or less, that you did. Um, First war. I'm still a little, uh, I don't want to say torn on it, because Mm -hmm. I I don't like war. Um, I don't like guns, actually. Um, I'm not sure if I've really emphasized that very much on on the show. Um, like Like, I hate guns. Like, I feel like if people are going to fight in wars and, 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 and I know this, this is uh, pie in the sky <laughs> and prehistoric, right. like you should see the whites of their eyes kind of thing. Like <laughs> you should have to like see who you're killing. You should have to get close and like see how awful it is to do it um, because it is awful. And I think the further away, um, you know, you can shoot someone or a drone attack someone, the less humanizing it is. And, um, mm-hmm. and, and, and I hit the entire thing of it. And, it, and I think it, it really starts with guns. Um, so, and it's just, you need little to no skill, I feel like, to kill someone with a gun. Just to like, you can still kill someone more skillfully with a gun, you know? Like, don't, don't get your panties in a bunch. I know you have to practice, <laughs> but not you. <laughs> you were sure like, what do you mean, no skill? <laughs> <laughs> you can punch your panties whenever you want. Um, <laughs> no, um, I, I guess in like a more kind of prime way, 
um, that's how I feel about war is try to avoid at all costs and then don't dehumanize your enemy because um, then you get unnecessary deaths yeah. um, and then you're the then you're the aggressor and then um, I don't believe in karma but just guy kind of going by cu- karma rules then you deserve anything you get mm-hmm. right like um, if the universe is in charge obviously I <laughs> Everyone know, here knows right. um, this atheist for humanism doesn't believe in that kind of shit. But also, like, I do believe in uh, balance and trying to keep things. Yeah. Out and the golden rule. Agency, yeah. So we, you know, we need to keep that shit in check. Mm-hmm. Um, you know, what led to 9-11? Our actions, right? Does that mean... I think those people deserve to die. Absolutely not. Absolutely not. But um, does that mean these, you know, the uh, people from Saudi Arabia, Al Qaeda, did it for no reason? Right. No. Right. It stems from from uh, something, and it's our foreign policy. Blowback. You know, it's blowback. It's blowback, and. Again, I don't want to say we deserved it. Right, we, nobody deserves that. Right, right. We did, we definitely uh, tipped the scales in one way to call for that action. Um, so, uh, I like Christie's answer about diplomacy, uh, having more teachers and doctors, and you know, groups without borders. Um, you know, making a more Making it too big to fail. Too big to fail with diversity. Right. On the human level, not not the big capital level, on the everyday human level. You know, yes. having kindergartners and first graders get a pen pal in a country far, far away where you have to spin the globe and point your finger and that's where you get a pen pal. You know, just yeah. make it so that we're like this. It's not so easy to just be like, eh. You know, if, if we know someone there, I think that that's important for all of the people who are parents right now, who have kids right now, to get them interested. Um, you can go to any, you go, go on to Google and write pen pal in whatever country you want. And there are so many organizations for you to have a pen pal in another country. My mom did it in second grade. When she was in second grade, her and her pen pal, who was in Hawaii, are still friends to this day, really you know, cool. and total different culture, Japanese in Hawaii, whose family I'm sure during world war two, were not allowed to leave the Island because there, you know, there's just so much you can learn from each other by yeah. not being such um, an inclusionist, like country where we're, we're just kind of America. We Fahrenheit instead of what the rest of the world has Celsius. We have miles instead of what the rest of the world has. There's so many things that make us very cut off from the world because we have our own. And that's a way for a government to indoctrinate a people and to be in isolation. It's scary. And it sounds, it sounds like a conspiracy, but the facts are that (laughs) those are the facts. Yeah, X, Y, Z. Anyways. Sanctions? Sanctions. Yeah, um, for sanctions for me, I, that's, because uh, I'm still not super smart. I, um, so let me just be dumb on camera. Um, is, is sanctions just like saying, okay, we're not going to trade with these people and <coughs> um, no one's allowed to? Like making it illegal to trade with a country. More than that. Like we can say. It's not just um, us. It's our allies. Right. Venezuela gets most of their insulin from us. So in the sanctions, we're going to say no more insulin. And if any of our allies do it too, they also get in trouble. And so who hurts? The people who need insulin. Right. Not the government. The rich people will always be able to get their insulin. Right. And like that's – and this – and that's how, how, how I understood them. I just like, I feel like unconfident about <laughs> any, any new knowledge that, that I get. And uh, any new knowledge I get can class, 
or like right. his classified. I mean, you know, it would be like all their exports from America: <laughs> Charmin, yeah. Tampax, Secret Deodorant. All of the exports that they would be getting from us, we can just say no, and you're not allowed yeah. to get them from anywhere else either. Yeah, yeah. So no, I mean, I, I mean, I would uh, not trade with. Uh, with the country, but I think, I think sanctions are, uh, when it comes to medicine and things that people need, I think that at this point in 2019, that as a people, people of the planet, we need to say, no, you're not fucking taking their medicine from them. You're mad at the government. Yeah. Go handle it. You know, you two boys go outside and fight while we stay in here and have our nice meal. Right. And I think that I wish. I wish. Yeah. Yeah. I think the best way that I can put it is lead by example. Yeah. Um, Really um, invest ourselves in in the United Nations and the um, the international criminal courts, and really just. Again, just invest ourselves and lead by example through these. If we want to not trade with a country like Saudi Arabia, yes. um, then don't trade with them. But also, we're not the cops of the world, are we? No. If, I uh, think that the, uh, if there should be an international group that would yeah. be designated to be cops of the world, and no one country would have any more influence over it than the, than the next. Right. Period. And they You're would be held at the more. highest standard. You know, yeah. the highest standard. You'd have yeah. to go to college, take psychology. You'd have to, ethics would have to, I mean, yes, I thought about that hard. Yeah. Because yeah. we live think, in a global world right right now. You know, there, there's international lawsuits. There's, we need international law and we need an international law force. Yeah, and I th- I think so too because that's the only way that we're really going to um, achieve any meaningful p- peace is if we have if we have international groups that can fight other forces like us, right. U.S. And us. not fight, but like you know right. fight. <laughs> yeah. yeah, fight and like come in here and just be like, all right. Hey. <laughs> Like uh, borrow your president for a little while because he's been in some shit, 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 some shady shit. No, no, you can keep your VP. No, <laughs> but we gotta take the president yep. because, like, yeah, that would fucking suck. <laughs> I but think also- Noam Chomsky said that every single president since World War II, if they were held at the same standards of the courts that we put together after World War II. He said every single one of them would be in in prison for war crimes. Oh, yeah. And that's not (laughs) true because what do we want to do with other countries? Right? What do we want to do with Putin? Right. Right. What do we want to do with Kim Jong-un? Right. You know, (laughs) justified. (laughs) (laughs) Like, what do we want to do with these people? How can we do it? You know, we are like the world's biggest hypocrites. And And we need... You know, we need a Batman group. <laughs> Contingency and, you know, for like everyone. When I say when I say that, we are the 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 scariest. You know, and I also get hit with we're also the best. We also have groups of people out there that are you know doing the most amazing things. Which you're right, we are. We do. We have, and that's why it's so frustrating to Americans in this nation who have never actually heard or seen or know the facts that their government is doing in their name or are doing to this day in their name. What they know is their family's nonprofit or their uncle's nonprofit or the, you know, the area they grew up in is outreach programs and, and habitat for humanity. And it's difficult. We need to get, um, education and facts to every single person. So for, for me, for my question um, for politics for you would be, Hmm. do you think that ethics should be mandatory in order to hold office? And I'm not talking about um, 
like just president. I'm talking about school board for everyone. The ethics should have to be mandatory. Ethics like like an ethics course in college or yep. yep. Okay. Um I'm hesitating for a specific reason. Um because well right right now not everyone's um afforded like education right right so that's why i'm just like you know if everyone can take an ethics course you know and it's free yeah i think that's I, I think that's a really really good stipulation um and also and it's not focusing on your question um so i'll just go ahead and say yes but in the in the back of my my mind i'm thinking well is that the only thing well, right. no, I don't think it's the only thing, but I think that is definitely something key that we should probably make. I mean, if we're going to make anything, anything like a stipulation, I think it's, you know, you know, you should take an ethics course. Right. I know. Yeah. I, I do for, for the yeah. job, for the job, you're to me, a civil servant. That, that is your job description. You work for the people. And ethics, to me, is in many cases, is what's lacking in a lot of people and a lot of candidates. To me, they just don't have ethics. They have me -ix. You know, what can help me? How can I re win my re-election? How can I make sure that I get the most votes so that I can stay in the seat? I don't know. And, you know, you're right. Not everybody could afford it. And it might make it so that somebody like AOC would be like, I just can't afford that right now. So I think that there would have to be some sort of a stipulation that you don't have to have it to run and get the seat. But the moment you're in it, it is paid for then by the taxpayers that you take. And yeah, that's by the taxpayers, you know, and you have a year to, you know, to complete it. Even if you go, you can do it in six months if you wanted, if you had the time or you could take the whole year, but yeah. you would have to complete it. I, I think that that would be good too. I think yeah, about that often. Yeah. Because that should be, uh, that should be something you're held to during your job. Like, and, and like, I'm thinking like in Congress right now, <laughs> like in North Carolina right now. And like, oh, well, you know, we all took this at, this uh, ethics course and, uh, um, you know, not going by decorum or not going by, you know, our ethic rules. You're, well, I'm you're pretty at, sure in your you know, ethics class, it's bitter. not going to say to lock out half of your other peers and vote without them. Yeah. yeah. I, think, That's I, I think stuff like that should be an automatic forfeit. Yeah. Like you don't get to choose your voters don't get to choose either. You broke the rules. You just, you just fucked your constituents and your job and your family. Yeah. And it's a huge deal. I hope people see this, what happened in North Carolina. I hope they see it as if in the president said, Hey, I know we normally vote on November 7th, but this year we're going to vote on November 8th. So don't worry about coming on November 7th and then had it anyway. And most of the country didn't come. I hope that that's how people see this because that's how low down and dirty this was. It was, yeah. it would be comical if it was a movie, it. right? It's uh, I, when I was watching it, I was watching it. Like they did it. They, they did. They did. Oh my gosh, they did. <laughs> then I had to start yeah. it over at the beginning and then read the article. Yeah. And yeah, it's not uh, something I would think a group of uh, democratically elected grown ups would do. But I mean, I've been wrong. I didn't well, think surprised. Trump would ever be president. So right. there's uh, that. that was wrong there. All right, and now religion. Okay. Um, well, do you have one? What? Like, religion or not yet? <laughs> mm, let's see. Well, there's a lot of, of 
religion. Um, I know you sent me that thing today, which has had me thinking since I watched it, how the guy changed his mind about prosperity religion. Oh yeah. That was pretty cool. Wasn't it? I that mean, was- what's his, I can't, I don't trust him. What's his oh, gimmick. Right. What's it? He is a multimillionaire now. Of course it's okay to let go of prosperity gospel. So what's his gimmick? I, I can't ever uh, trust him. Right. I mean, I like to like give people the benefit of the doubt. I can think, you know, people eventually grow a conscience, even if it's like too late. I'd like to, too. <laughs> and you know what? I probably would be able to do that if he was a person who did something, a thing or two, and then learn from it. But he yeah. built his his millions on scamming people. Yeah. So I can't. I, I just, all like, cheer me on as I say something against it. Yes. Yes. I, I don't. Ways, I'm glad you got there, Prosperity buddy. Prosperity gospel is um, definitely something that was spawned here in the United States of America. Because yeah. only in the United States of America can you be just absolutely blessed by Jesus because you have a mansion and a private jet you know yes your husband cheated on you but you you is working that out with Jesus is nobody's business as long as churchgoers just keep bringing that check each week Jesus loves me yes he does you know I just you're, you're giving me what I uh, call uh, RMSA. ASMR. Bad things. Yes. <laughs> like nails on a. Yes. Oh, Jesus just loves me. I know he loves me because I'm rich. Like, I'm rich. Oh. Best me. So he doesn't love the starving child. Is that what you're saying? But yeah. for some reason. <laughs> that reminds me of the, the meme that says, um, oh, how does it go? I know Jesus loves me because he helped me find my keys or, you know, whatever it is. He helped me find my keys so yeah. I wasn't late. And then underneath it, it has the, you know, like 12 to 20 starving, beautiful, tiny little black babies with their hands out starving. But that's okay. But Jesus helped you find your keys, so yeah. Well, yeah. So welcome yeah. suburbia. Yeah. <laughs> Fine. yeah. So, solid perspective. Okay. So how yeah. do we make a good a good question? Because I feel like you and I mostly agree on like religion is bullshit kind of thing. Yeah. Um, but so like, do you have any type of spirituality at all? You know, I I would probably have to say I do. There's something that happens when I am with nature. And I don't think that it's magical, but I don't really have a term for it. I guess, you know, as Native Americans and indigenous would say, we come from the land. There is something majestic, maybe that's a good word, about being with the land if I'm at the beach and the waves are coming up on me and I can smell the salt and I see dolphins and you know there's just something right then that's just like oh I'm so lucky to be alive and be here and experience right. that and to me that would be my spirituality that would be that moment where I'm like goosebumps there's something to this but I don't think magical about it i don't have magical thinking about it to that, yeah this is magic and that i'm connecting with the energy of the universe and ooh, i don't have that but right. i do think that you know for in the in the grand scheme of the universe i'm so small you know like the tip of this pencil i'm smaller than that in the grand scheme of it However, I still get to be there on the beach that day and see that dolphin and know that people love me and have a belly full of food. And just that that is, to me, my spirituality, I think. And comic books and music and marijuana. (laughs) (laughs) And Mac and Nacha, our Lord and Savior. (laughs) And Mr. Bean. Yes, I am in the cult of Mr. Bean. 
I worship him. <laughs> what about you? You have... Um, um, I think you pretty much nailed it. Just about everything you said there, except r r really the uh, the Mary Jane. Yeah. Like, I don't mind it, but like I'd say rum instead. Yeah. yeah. Uh, I like to get that tingly feeling. Yeah. For anyone who doesn't know, I, I'm not really like, I don't like to get drunk. I don't like to get right. shrasted. Yeah. But I do like feeling. I do like the warm tinglies. I love everybody that. in the club getting tipsy. Okay, <laughs> let me tell you this real quick story since yeah, we're having yeah, go three. for it. Go for it. Now. When when Isabel was two, and her best friend was two, and it was a girlfriend of mine's daughter. They were in the back. We were in a sport utility, and they were both in the back seat. I was in the passenger seat. My best friend, or our good friend, was driving, and everybody in the club getting tipsy. That song came on, right? So we're coming home yeah. from the beat. And we hear the girls who are two singing and eating chips, but they were singing everybody in the club eating chipses. And they'd go, oh, oh. <laughs> everybody <laughs> in the club eating chipses. So to this day, she's 21 now. <laughs> Every time we hear that song, it's everybody in the club eating chipses. <laughs> That's fantastic. That's so, so cute. That, like, you know, you're a parent when you're, laying yeah. down next to them and their faces right here and you're looking in their eyes and they put their little hand on your face and rub your hair back. Oh, that, that's spiritual to me. There's just something. Yeah. Oh, I yeah. Think I like, got free, nothing changed ever in the world right now. Yeah. 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 I think I got that once with Ali. Every other time the, uh, the hand went. <laughs> but, anyways. Um, no, but I, I mostly agree because again, I mean, I wouldn't call it like supernatural, but, it, um, spiritual is a good word to, um, iterate it. Right. Um, when I'm at the beach, when I something looking, bigger than uh, me that I yeah, get to be a part something of something huge when it's, yeah. when you realize you're part of a larger world and it's pretty right. Yeah. Like when it was, when I'm looking at the, the stars and the beach those are the, my, my like three big ones right. um and then again yes with with uh my kids yes uh, or even my students sometimes it's nice yeah. to just be part of this little community um but yeah and it's um i don't think it's supernatural but i definitely appreciate it i appreciate it's it and super you get cool. this, like, it's essential <laughs> Like right. from yourself feel sometimes that like you're looking from not just your own, like you're looking at like the larger picture and it's cool. Like, I think that's, I think it's neat that we've evolved in such a way to where we can, ex um, we can break down an experience in our head in such a way right. to appreciate a bigger picture and um, just appreciate a bigger picture. I just have to say it again, um, no, cause I, I don't, yeah. there's a lot of species that can really do that. Like we can. Right. And no, I, I, I agree. Mr. Bean can't think about coming home and getting a cookie and walking home and getting a cookie. <laughs> you know, through, no, it's either he's, he'll stop and look at me like, yes, cookie or keep walking and Ooh, a lizard. So, so yeah, we're very, we're very fortunate that we can do that. <laughs> You know, yeah. I also say, "Ooh, a lizard!" But yeah. <laughs> I can also think about many things at the same time. Yeah, yeah. The, it's not supernatural, but it's super rad. It's super yeah. rad that you get to help in those students of yours when they're your age, twenty years down the road, thirty years down the road, they will remember their teacher who imparted this amazing memory that they have that they will tell their, you know, it's just this bigger thing that we're a part of. And I think that it cheapens it to put it on some magical thing that is different everywhere. And nobody has anything that they can hold on to that would make it true when we have truth in front of us. You yeah. know, we are the truth. They think that the most important spiritual thing for humans is the truth is to know the truth is to understand the truth and to learn from the truth, you know, and not the truth like Jehovah witnesses with a capital T <laughs> the actual demonstrable truth that we can 
as far as we can tell with the evidence we have now know to be true, which is subjects to change when new evidence, you know, comes. I, I just think that that to, to be where we are now and think back to just the iron age with someone says the earth doesn't revolve around the sun. This, this, I mean that the sun doesn't revolve around the earth that we revolve around You're beheaded beheaded and now we can um remember that story and tell it as in a what the hell were they thinking because now we can hold so many things to be true because we have evidence of them and we've just come so far i think we're at a very i don't want to say spiritual <laughs> we're at a very enlightened time yeah. you know the yeah. the age of information i think to not to not use the information, to not take advantage of the sum of man's knowledge at our fingertips would be a waste of a life right now. There's just too much to learn. I will never have enough time to learn it, but I do plan to learn as much as I can because what else is there? And maybe that is my religion. Maybe my religion is learning. You know, I, I wake up to do it. I think about it. I yearn to do more for it. I look forward to spend all the things that um, I think that someone who would be Christian, you know, I live for Jesus. I wake up for Jesus. I want to please Jesus. I wake up to learn. I want to learn. I The more I learn, the more pleased I am with myself. The more I can find things that I had wrong and correct them, the more excited I get. So maybe yeah. that's my religion, learning. So I went from being religious to being a geek. Yeah, <laughs> look at that. <laughs> yeah. No, smart, pretty. And, I've always thought smart was sexy. I did. I just wish that I could understand math. When math starts having hieroglyphics in it, you lose me. Huh? Yeah. I, Steve McRae a few months back yeah. said, I have a, a show uh, almost a year ago. I'm going to start doing math shows. Tell me what you think. Sent me, he sent me a link and it was, he wanted to do it at basics so I could understand. Yeah. <laughs> okay. First of all, I think I watched the first one. I was like, I, I don't know if I'm ready for this. I don't know what you're talking about. And I'm like yeah. basics, like, you know, pre-algebra. <laughs> can we, can we start there? He's such I, a I will get it. Like, really I think fast. he knows it. I think he I, knows it. I took pre-algebra. I took algebra. I, I took yeah. geometry. I'm sure I will catch it again. I just, that was then, you know, and, and maybe I sound horrible admitting that, but that's the truth. I really would need to start that far back to get a hold oh. of it. But I also think that I'm in a different spot in my life that I would enjoy getting it. I would just need somebody who... Mm -hmm would have the patience to teach me. <laughs> yeah. But also I think that I'm way more interested in history and social sciences, um, political theory. I'm obsessed with economics. Me, yeah. I don't like math. Economics. I can't get enough of it. Yeah. I'm 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 falling down that rabbit hole too. I'm I'm really loving it. I, I love it. It help like, doesn't it help you understand? Like, like everything the world <laughs> <laughs> it's like for me it was like first i understood like religion and then i mean like i under started to understand what like i thought of religion right and that led me to philosophy trying to like figure out what the fuck logic is yeah. oh it has a definition oh it has like um equations yes yes well, <laughs> What? <laughs> yeah, and what headache. Just trying to get basic smart. <laughs> and just un undumb. I was just trying to get undumb. undumb. Yeah. <laughs> and then, yeah, after that, like, came politics, and it was like, oh, politics and, like, economics marry up? What? It's just like, you just you just keep learning that there's something new. But that but that means you're learning. That means, like, when, when when you find a new branch of, of, of something, that means, like, hey, you must be listening. You know, something must be sinking in. And you must care about it enough to keep digging through. And that's wonderful. That's really cool. And I keep, 
I like loved astronomy and that led me to, to the religious stuff, but it also like led me to math. I'm like, I'm like, Oh no, to get this better. I need to math now. Cause like yeah. I got everything I needed to without the math. Yeah. Um, and now I have to go back and like refresh, but like, I couldn't think of anything else I needed to learn about astronomy. Just like, um, like amateurly, I guess without, finding out math like uh, otherwise i was your go-to guy (laughs) but um but since since me and math don't like cling really easy um i just started deep thinking more Mm -hmm. which led me to doubting religion and all that jazz so um it led me down a different path which is cool i'm eternally grateful to the stars Yes. Screw Jesus. A star died so that you could be here. Ah, that's right. We're all stardust. I love you, Neil deGrasse Tyson. We also, some of your tweets are garbage, but that's okay. And watch. Oh, I just swallowed a whole bunch of chemicals. You did. I thought you were choking on them. <gasps> chemicals. <laughs> chemicals. Chemicals. <laughs> Breath of Einstein and Hitler. What? Oh no! <laughs> Exhale a little oh, bit. No. Oh no, wrong one. <laughs> R- oh, R- yes, I'm glad that you're liking um, economics too. I, if yeah. someone would have told me just four years ago that I would be like, oh, I can't wait for everyone to go to sleep so I can start my next, you know, lecture on economics, I would have been like, you're smoking stuff that I need because I think that you're crazy. But well, I, also, yes, I looked forward to it, yeah, <laughs> and, and, <laughs> and that. So, yeah, I just roll a, a big fat one and then learn world economics and the yeah. history of world economics because we have so much data in. Different countries have tried so many different things, and we have the outcome and the numbers. And if we know these things, it's easier to not be ran over by our own government, you know, to not be, we can say, wait, 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 (laughs) that's not true because of, you know, and, and then source that here's some receipts. I find it fascinating. 2000 years since the, you know, the, the Christ (laughs) we've had, and then, countless of thousands of years before then of human societies and and the wisdom that comes from it and at this time and in that history there's a wealth of knowledge for anyone who wants it and i'm not saying that every course that your heart's desire may be free you may have to start with classes that aren't exactly what you want because they are aren't, you know, behind a a paywall. But I'm telling you that the wealth of knowledge that you will gain from just taking um, the Great Courses Plus, which is, you know, very inexpensive, or just going to YouTube and looking up uh, Professor Richard Wolf, Professor Nancy McLean, there's just so many of them who who feel like the knowledge that they're able to teach is so valuable that it is free. They want the more people, the better. And I agree with that. I think that to have, to be number one, America, fuck yeah, number one, we would want the best in education. We would want the best doctors. We would want the best, you know, we would want to be able to have our society retire at age 55 because we can afford it. And because those golden years should be spent with your grandchildren, you know, just all of these to be the best at them, the best in math, the best in all those things. Take best education. Free thinkers. Yes. Best free thinkers. Exactly. But what they found was the more education a human had, the less likely they were to vote conservative. The more education a human has, the less likely they were to fall for religion. And so those things, those two facts alone, make it so that the people that are in those groups that would like to keep people indoctrinated are very powerful and they will fight it. And they are fighting it. And that's why we're where we are right now. Yeah. Yeah. It's a conspiracy. 
<laughs> God damn it. Except for it's all true. So Yeah. All right. So you put <laughs> you put a pretty little bow on the end of our conversation. That was really well said. So um and we are gonna wrap up uh because uh uh, it's been about an hour and a half. Rup, 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 wrap it up. We, we try to cut our shows off then. We also said hour, hour. Got this in an hour. <laughs> yeah. That damn nacho just talks and talks and talks. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> if you shut up, maybe we could get it. I mean, uh, get a word edgewise. in edgewise. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> All right. Yes, that was a lot of fun. And I love you. I love Nacha. And yeah. comfy combos in our jammies are amazing. And yes. nice. stay humanist for God's sake. Good night, everyone. See you next week. <laughs> <laughs>